it's me Jess welcome to my channel I'm here with another channeled message this is a specific message it might resonate with you it might not okay so this is a very happy message actually I feel like for a lot of you you have a soulmate energy coming in and it's gonna feel quick is what I'm getting so uh, for some of you I think you may have already met this person that's just for a few of you I think for most of you this energy is in the offing it's on its way in but they keep circling this word quick in my mind and they're not giving me much of a timeline here I do think it's gonna be different for everybody but they're, they, they're using this word quick because it is a subjective term, but it's a feeling. It's a feeling. It's going to feel quick. So even if I tell you, you know, this is about a year out or something uh, for some of you, it's sometimes you blink and you miss a year going by, you know, it's going to feel like a very quick turnaround. And I feel like in part why this is going to feel so quick is because of your focus, like where your focus has been. And that's because this soulmate energy coming in is it's coming in off the back of you ending a major karmic cycle. And this is an energy that we've been picking up on on my channel here for quite some time. So they're showing me that you've ended this karmic cycle, but your, your focus, you've really put the work in, you've been very diligent. And um, they're showing me somebody like pushing a, like a giant stone wheel, you know? And so it was slow going to kind of get this started. It was like touch and go, but you've worked up quite a bit of speed actually, as much speed as you can get, just pushing a stone wheel with your shoulder. You know, you've really started to work up some kind of speed. And I think that's taken you so much time and so much effort that you haven't exactly realized how much progress you've been making and how much speed that you've created. And I think they're speaking like spiritually, energetically, you really have worked up quite a momentum here. And that's what's bringing in this soulmate energy. So, um, you've really been working this karmic cycle and now they're showing me this like whirlpool energy. And actually I do get a lot of watery imagery with this group more, um, recently and water to me, it's like, spiritual energy it is emotion energy and money energy all of those could be major themes that were wrapped up in this particular karmic cycle that has come to an end but i'm seeing it create that you pushing that wheel it's creating this like whirlpool energy which is that that major karmic um cycle that you've ended but they're showing me smaller karmic lessons that have been pulled into this whirlpool or that have been a part of keeping this whirlpool energy kind of going so you've also been processing through quite a bit of these even smaller karmic lessons you've really been learning a lot you have made the most of your time you've been so diligent you've been so focused and it's you really have elevated very quickly spiritually speaking in a very short period of time and i think you know focus is a funny thing time is so relevant relative that I think some of you might laugh and say, well, it's been several years, but you've got to say, you know, several years um, is so relatively quick when you consider that you are an eternal soul and you've come in here lifetime after lifetime and who knows how many lifetimes this karmic cycle has been in place and you've managed to turn that around in just a few years. That's actually very impressive. That's very, it's quite quick. And like I said, it is creating quite a bit of energy behind you in a spiritual sense. And that's the energy that this soulmate energy is coming off the back of. And that's where they show me I'm seeing you now in a speedboat. Again, there's a lot of watery um, imagery that I'm getting here. Um, so I'm seeing you kind of, you're going through this, I wanna use the word reservoir, which to me it's like, yeah, it's it's a contained like watery lake kind of thing, but it's very deep. And deep water to me, it's very scorpionic. Again, this is so many references to you doing the shadow work, getting really deep in there to do with emotions, which has probably affected your spirituality and potentially your money here as well. All of these things have been tied up here for this group in this one karmic cycle. But I'm seeing you on this speedboat where I'm hearing you've mapped it. Like you've mapped this really well. You kind of, you know this inside and out, this aspect of your of your world, you know, of your, this, this landmark feature of your karma and your world, you've done it, you've, you've mapped it and you're on the speedboat energy. And again, you're moving quick and you probably don't have an understanding as to how quick you're moving. Cause it just seems normal to you now. And you know, boats, speedboats, especially they, they create a wake behind them. And that word wake is a very interesting word. Cause it has that double meaning. Uh, and it, it can mean a funeral. And I'm hearing that like funeral and then a wedding. And for some of you that might be literal for a few of you, not for everybody, but for some of you, you literally could experience a funeral and then um, some, this soulmate energy coming in, you might meet this person at someone's funeral. That might be for some of you, but I definitely think it's more metaphorical where I'm hearing out with the old and in with the new. So it's like the speedboat energy is pulling this out with the old energy in. But now that you've completed this, I'm seeing you 
slow down your speedboat because you're going to dock it. And as you're pulling into that dock, again, your focus is on docking your boat after this major karmic cycle. So you're pulling up to the dock and now you've got to grab it. You've got to tie your boat up and everything and get all your stuff so you can get out of it. That's what your focus is on. But that wake energy, it's still pulling the water behind you. And it feels very graceful to me. Like it's just, that's what's pulling in this soulmate energy. It's just going to it's just going to rise up here like to your dock and it's going to feel very smooth. And I'm just seeing you look up from the boat and like there's this soulmate energy. And it's just kind of like, oh, um, and it's going to feel just like that. And um, I'm hearing the word serenity. And I think that's something that you've really cultivated within yourself. I think you have, I just heard, eradicated quite a bit of cowardice and codependency. And this journey may have confronted you with a lot of things, like maybe some things that you were really afraid of. Some, some of you, it's like your worst fears for some of you. Um, but also, yeah, you found your courage, you found your footing and you've realized that you're whole within yourself and that's that serenity energy. And I'm hearing the serenity prayer and I'm actually seeing it tacked up, um, like carved into the wood on your dock. It says, um, God grant me the serenity to accept the things I cannot change, courage to change the things I can and the wisdom to know the difference. And I feel like that's, you're situated very well in your energy because that's what you have integrated. That's what you've incorporated, not just as a mental concept, but it's just, it's the way you live and breathe. It's the way that you interact with the world. And so you meet this soulmate and I think you feel very calm about it. I don't think that you're expecting this to be a life changing experience. I think you're good with it either way. And that's not, um, saying anything about the love between the two of you because the love between the two of you is very real and i think you're learning something here about that as well like adult relationships and about the nature of love um comparing that to whatever this karmic cycle is that you've been on the back of but this soulmate that's coming in is very much mirroring and matching your energy and you might not catch on to that kind of right away because again i feel like they're in a very similar energy and this is very emperor empress so um your the greatness in both of you is the muchness that you bring to the table you're well-rounded people that doesn't always stick out to people right away because a lot of these you know it's the same thing where like a lot of times the richest person in the room is the most understated you know um a lot of times the the person who is like the boss or the leader, they're the most understated, you know, it's kind of like that kind of energy. And I think that's caused some inappropriate mirroring to go on around you and this other person in the past. And I think that's a big focus of your union, your partnership on a spiritual level. It's a part of this like healing journey where you are going to actually finally be that healthy mirror to the other person. They're going to make the difference for you in your life. You're all of a sudden you're going to, you're going to feel that solid foundation. You're going to feel secure. You're going to feel supported. You're going to feel loved. You're going to feel seen. You're, they're going to point out, um, traits within you that they can very clearly see, and they're not going to try to play a game with you to knock your confidence so that you chase them around or, you know, they're going to, they're going to be holding that up to you and it's going to be very reassuring. And because of that, I feel like you're going to grow. There's really, there's an element of growth to this partnership and this connection. And again, it's kind of mirroring what you've already started for yourself with that wheel that you've really pulled a lot of energy in where it's going to, this is something that's just going to keep building like a bonfire. It's going to keep growing and growing and growing the love that you feel for one another, but also where you're able to build spiritually within yourself and in the material world, this is foundation energy. And you might actually, you know, foundation energy can be difficult. I think you, you're coming off the back of that. You actually built your own foundation, but in the world, this feels like you're going to be building some kind of foundation together and it might be slow going, but honestly, it's going to be very rewarding. And every single step you take is going to be better than where you were in the past. So I don't think it's going to feel bad necessarily. Um, and you're going to build so much trust and so much support in the process, which those are the intangibles, right? Those are things you can't put a price tag on. And you're going to realize how much it means, not just to you to receive it and why you're so valuable, why you bringing that to the table in a relationship. I think you've been with people that have just thrown that over like, Oh, that's not important. Are you a rock star? Do you drive a sports car? Do you have a D cup? Like, you know, and you're like, why are you asking me if I have a D cup? I'm literally an empress. Like that's what I'm saying. There's been inappropriate mirroring in the past where somebody doesn't know their butt from a hole in the ground when it comes to what's actually valuable. And so I think you've, you've internalized that, but I think that's part of the shadow work and you're realizing that you are the prize. Your soulmates realizing that they are the prize. And there's quite a lot of mirroring between the two of you because I think both of you are coming off of the back of closing down major, major karmic cycles in your own life, in your own spiritual journey. And I don't know what that is for this other person necessarily, but I do think it has a rhyme and a reason to what's been going on in your um, circle. For some of you, it's very matchy matchy. It could have to do with romance, but for others, I'm hearing something like a family business or it could be something to do with a business, but I think the patterning might be the same. Cause I think for both of you, these karmic cycles had to do something with, uh, 
fantasy, like half lie, half lie is not equal to truth. So it's like so people were somewhat honest with you and it gave you this false impression that you were loved or cherished or that you could build there. Um, but they were hiding quite a bit. They were hiding their fixation with someone else. They could uh, be hiding the fact that, well, they do have these values, but only sometimes and not in the face of selfishness when they feel like they can profit. You know what I'm saying? It's like um, something like that. So I think that you kind of been taken for a ride in like a fantasy, believing something that wasn't real and but it's a real slick fantasy, I think, here as well. Something that you had to grow sick and tired of, but it always, it maybe ended with like this eight of wands energy is what I'm getting. Um, very fast turnaround, some kind of very quick realization, very quick uh, message. It could have to do with travel for some of you, where then when that information or whatever this is comes in, that's when the rug gets pulled out from underneath you. And all of a sudden you're left in this five of pentacles energy you're thrown out it could have affected definitely your confidence um but also maybe your money and this could be anything this could be well you were in a marriage with this person and all of a sudden you realize that they weren't the person that you thought and they're throwing you over for somebody else and now you're half of your assets you only have half your assets or maybe you were sharing an apartment with this person at the very least and now you got to pay the entire rent because this person went running off you know whatever it's like i think that's been the pattern that you've had to deal with and this person this soulmate energy that's coming through it's very similar um and i, I think they're they've been knocked in some way with this five of pentacles maybe you're not even expecting this to kind of go any place because maybe you both feel like you're not ready but you actually are this is another spiritual lesson because you've both actually done the healing work within yourself or something but this um somebody here like especially this masculine again this could have to do with a business like a family business or again assets or something that they had to sell um they had to something fell and they had to rebuild and that part of their lesson is learning again that they are the prize they're the emperor they're the value it wasn't the assets that they built up in their business, the building that they had, the four cars, um, the savings account, the investment in another property across town that all kind of came crumbling down and they, they associated their worth with that. No, they're the engine that can make that happen. This person knows a lot about laws and business and um, how to build relationships with people. And they're gonna, they needed to kind of go through this in order for them to understand where the value lies. The value lies within them. Where the value lies really stu stood out to me. Lies, lies. Something that they thought was value, lies. Okay, so something that they thought had a lot of value didn't. This It's kind of reminding me of like the stock market or something. Okay, well, I put a lot of stock in this. And then uh, because I was sold a lie, that's what I'm hearing. And um, yeah, so it's like, you remember that lady? She's a sociopath lady. And she went around, she got all these crazy investors for this like blood test. Uh, I, you, you know, I can't remember her name, um, but it was going to be just the end all be all for like a medical revolution. And actual physicians were like, this is impossible to do, like said that multiple times, but she still managed to get some very powerful donors behind um, her back. It, it feels like that investing in something that seems very valuable, but then actually wasn't and losing everything. And they thought, oh, this is where my value is going to come from. Something here like that. Now, for some, it could be in romance. It could be partnering up with somebody in romance and that might mirror your journey but for others it's something else but again this is there's a lot of mirroring here between the two of you and i'm seeing your hands there could be something significant about hands between the two of you you could like each other's hands um i think you might like holding each other's hands but i think that's just a symbol of union of partnership of like and we are going together and i'm hearing if you want to go fast go alone um, and i think this person actually did want to go fast in the past maybe you did as well and so you could have realize that you had chosen people or part that could have been part of the karmic cycle is that you were wanting to go somewhere fast and so you ended up choosing partners that you were really alone um yeah i mean you had maybe a marriage certificate you changed your name but you were really alone like in that uh in those endeavors this is partnership i'm hearing if you want to go far go together this is definitely a relationship that can go the distance and there's a building effect to this as well again this love between you is just going to keep growing and growing and growing that's the kind of, it's the tortoise and the hare, you know, where it's like, oh, it's not like flashy or something, but this is real love. This is God love. This is like heavenly love um, between the two of you. And yeah. So um, the other thing I'm getting, so whatever it is, there's karmic cycles. You've both been round and around. There's the trigger of the cycle and there's the full, uh, you know, the, the crescent, the waning period of like whatever your cycles are. And I do feel like there's been some kind of message where somebody has been caught out and, um, 
there's been a lot of pain and there's been a lot of um, reckoning with a, a fantasy energy and then there's been a lot of healing. And um, the path that I feel like you were on before, I'm seeing the yellow brick road, follow the yellow brick road, follow the yellow brick road, which again, I feel like it's this fantasy element, but, um, and I'm hearing yellow belly, which is a, another way of saying coward. So um, it was a path of, it, what put you on that path was something to do with fear and confronting your fear and maybe codependency here as well. But that is the path that le you know leads you to the Tin Man and the Scarecrow and the, the Lion. And then, of course, to the man behind the curtain. And I feel like that's been the journey that you're on, which to me feels very Emperor Empress. And I think both of you in your own version have been on that yellow brick road, that fantasy. But introducing you to your head, your heart, your courage. And again, pulling back that man, seeing the man behind the curtain. And she finally says at the end of that story that... If it wasn't in her own backyard, she never really lost it to begin with. And I feel like that's what you're realizing is that you are your own answer. You are your own fulfillment. This life experience is about you and cultivating your soul and um, you're fine on your own. And you've had to confront a, a lot of things that I think you really have had to um, dig deep and you've, it's had, you know, you've met adversaries, etc. But the new path that I'm seeing you go on with this person, the road before you is red. It's very, there's so much, it's root chakra energy, right? It's root energy, so it's rooted, but there's a lot of activity around this root. This is a healthy root that is going to sprout up into something. And that's what I'm saying. There's so much building energy, builder energy here between you and this person, a lot of maybe dharmic energy as well. There's a lot of energy behind this and a lot of passion actually, but this is healthy passion that I think you will be exploring and getting to know um, as opposed to unhealthy passion that was a part of the fantasy cycle that you experienced with another person who maybe burned bright at first, but then uh, it, they couldn't sustain because a lot of it was built on a lie or they just built, they, they fed, fed some kind of fantasy. And um, that's where I want to get into the last little part of this because actually I think you going on this journey, finally closing down this karmic cycle and choosing to start afresh and start anew is what's triggering the karma to unfold here for, I think both of you, like you and this emperor energy, of course, flip those energies if you want, but like for the karmic energies on both sides, you really bolster each other actually and your position and you could provide some level of protection from like lies and defamation that these karmic people might've been spreading about you or wanted people to believe that you were at fault for the, um, crashing down of a relationship, attributing traits to you that aren't really there. You really bolster each other's position because this is a healthy relationship. It is going to go the distance. It just flies in the face of everything that these people were kind of, maybe they try to blame you for their own lies and their own shortcomings. So you really bolster that. But I feel like that's what's triggering the karma here on the other uh, person's side. And some of you do need to hear that in order to really finally put this to bed and to know that there is justice in the universe and that when we do our work, things do shift and change. And I was getting that, you know, you needed to break free from the lies here. You had to break free. Um, and so they, this couldn't have come any faster on this person's side of things. Cause I do feel like this, this karmic energy from your past that did all of this to you. I think what's unfortunate is I do think this person was actually a soulmate of yours and you were both learning very similar lessons. And I think this person needed to keep up. And I think they needed to wake up to the fact that they were obsessed or feeding into some fantasy of their own. And you guys could have gone on this path and this journey together. I don't think that occurred. And I think you received most of the repercussions of this, the karmic repercussions, which were all the variables in the situation that you needed to realize that you were being put on the back burner. You were not being prioritized. It was, you know, that same pattern of like, wait, there's a lot here that I haven't accounted for. And it is because this person's lying to you in some way, lying by omission. Um, and they're doing that because they don't respect you. And because they're trying, they're prioritizing something that's not real. Um, they're prioritizing their own karmic energy, whatever that is. And they weren't supposed to do that. This person was supposed to wake up and realize themselves realize what was actually going on here. And I just don't think that occurred. So you set yourself free and you had to go on this journey alone. And that's what's made it very, very hard. I'm seeing you stumbling through the desert now and like looking for like water and like seeing mirages and like, you know, um, that whole, that whole thing. But desert energy for me, it's also Rahu. So it's put you in touch with your destiny, I think here as well. Um, cause you took your route with you, um, which is the key to that. But so you have, and you finally reached your finish line and and you've gotten through this. And now this person's gonna have to go through that exact same journey, um, but they're gonna have to go through it alone. You had the option to go through this together. This person chose not to do that. And 
So now I think there's something here that energetically you're away from this person and you've chosen a different path and you're safe and you're secure that's triggering this karma to unfold in this person's side of things. Like I said, they had to hold strong, like they had to, they didn't, they couldn't pop this fantasy bubble, the spiritual energies before you got out because you needed to see all the lies and the untruths and that this person was hiding a lot from you. And that wouldn't have happened if this person's fantasy burst and they didn't want this person choosing you because for all the wrong reasons. There's karmic lessons being learned here. People have to wake up to the truth because that's what that means is they're waking up to the truth. Not that it's being artificially poked, the, the fantasy is being artificially poked from the outside. That doesn't mean anything, you know, in terms of spiritual growth and development. So you did what you were supposed to do, which is triggering this karma to occur now on this person's side. And I feel like that same pattern that played out for you, where there was this eight of wands moment where a message came in very suddenly and then it pulled the rug out from underneath you. That's what's now going on with this person. And I'm hearing, I can see clearly now the rain has gone. Um, so I feel like now this person realizes that they have fed a fantasy and that it's too late with you. I think that's a big part of their crashing um, revelation is that the truth, the goodness, the real empress in the situation, that person's gone. That ship has sailed, that boat, <laughs> that boat has gone. Um, and at speed and they're quite a bit, they're very far actually away from this person and they're having to reckon. There's a reckoning that's going on here in this person's space with where they've built. And I do think part of this person's karma because you, you wised up to this. I'm not saying it was day one, but you didn't run from your lessons. Okay. You didn't put this off for 15 years. You actually looked at this when you needed to look at this. Okay. So your karmas have unfolded and you know, they've unfolded cause you, you crawled over all those rocks, didn't you? <laughs> you know, um, and you know that they've unfolded and you're very proud of yourself. And I just don't think you'd change it now that you kind of have come home to yourself. I think it's it's been worth it to you. Um, and you're on that other side of it. This person's karmas are going to be a little different because they have been allowed to build in their fantasy. That's part of like, so they've really invested here in something. And that's their karma is worse than yours in a way because they were their head was further into their butt than yours was. So, um, They've been allowed to build here. So whatever this is like crashing down, um, they're losing a lot more than you did because they didn't, I, the writing has been on the wall with this person for quite some time and they just didn't want to believe it. So now they're having their own kind of crashy realization, crashing realization where they're realizing that actually they've been going around and around here with this person, that they're same thing that you had to learn. There's a, there's a trigger to this cycle. There's a waxing and a waning period to this cycle. It loops back around. Nothing ever changes. They've caught somebody out here. Maybe with some kind of love message, they realize that this person is a phony or that whatever it is that they chose over you, because for some, it's not like another person. For a lot of you, I think it is. Um, they've realized that they've been a phony, perhaps, that there's trickster energy. This is They've fallen for some kind of fairy tale, some kind of like absolute fantasy, and they've been backstabbed in the process, which is, I think, the way that you felt with this person or would have felt with this person if you hadn't had your wits about you in the way that you did, something like that. So they've woken up to the fact that there's actually been quite a lot of uh, perhaps cheating, I think, um, there's been a lot of mind games. There's been a lot of deception and it's leading to a lot of pain. I think for some of these people, they're realizing they could, I'm hearing uh, Maury, like remember the TV show Maury? I'm pretty sure that was the, that isn't that the one where it's like, you are not the father. So for some, it, and I've been getting this on my channel where there's been a lie about paternity, um, where somebody, and this could be maybe with their father, maybe it's like the person that they thought was their father Look, I am your father, <laughs> you know, or some something is coming out of the woodwork is what I'm getting. This could be with one of those ancestry.com tests, you know, where it's like, let's just see where our ancestry comes from. And it's like, you're not related to this child. One, one lick, you know, some, something like that. I don't mean to laugh. I'm laughing because I'm nervous, um, you know, but yeah. So it could, it could be something here that's revealed that again, like maybe they've invested quite a lot in this child. Maybe they've, you know, I just heard eight. This child could be eight. <laughs> Um, they could be old. Um, I mean, this is their own father. That's for some, that's not going to be for, for everybody, but there's been some kind of crashing realization that they've been lied to. I think for a lot of you, it does involve a pregnancy. And for some, this is, again, this is, this is out there. So only take this if it resonates, but I think this person may have been cheating for quite some time. I think there were uh, several, like a handful of terminated pregnancies that didn't belong to this person if they had been married. Um, or I think this, Whatever, this is just the tip of the iceberg, whatever came through. It really is because this person's a piece of work. Um, but yeah, so now I think this person's in their head about 
believing the lies that it's the same journey. It's like literally the same journey that you were on with this person where you're like, I thought I felt something. I guess not. Although I do think it was real between the two of you. I do think there's a strong soulmate love. I just think that this person had to learn what love is and what they didn't value you and they threw you over for something horrid. And now they're realizing that and they can't go back. And some of you might receive a message from this person from your past or from these people. Cause for some of you, this is a multiple pattern, some kind of like with your family and of not being treated well. So some of you, now that you've decided to like leave this, you really have energetically put this to bed. Um, some of you may hear from some of these people, but I do just want to encourage you to leave the past in the past. Don't be this snake in the grass to this new soulmate. You know what this is, you know? So this is maybe the last little bit of you fully closing down on this cycle. See all of this for exactly what it is. And I think this is a part of your justice energy of you being validated of, you know, it's like, hey, I really should have invested in you. I really messed up. I know now that you're my soulmate. I think you probably don't think of this person as a soulmate. You probably think of them as a karmic lesson. I think that's who they've chosen to be, to be honest, because it's like a karmic soulmate energy where this person has maybe been a soulmate of yours, got wrapped up in their own karmic energy that honestly they just couldn't overcome. And I think they've chosen to be extremely karmic to you in their actions. And a lot of that was just through not really paying you any mind, um, you know, not really thinking about their actions and how it affected you. And so a lot of you, you have this wound of being second best or being overlooked or not being cared for. That's all going by the wayside with this new soulmate energy. This that And again, this is the whole journey together. You're, you're going to mirror to this other person their value and how much they mean to your life. Um, and this person's going to do the same for you. Like, wow, I've never experienced this before. You really make the difference for me. Um, I would never throw you over for something cheap or chintzy or fantasy. I will never not choose the path of reality again. It feels so much better to build firmly in reality and not to believe a pretty lie um, in that in that one moment, you know, to take that puff off of that cigarette, whatever that is. I think you're really just learning that and it's going to come. It's going to be very fruitful, whatever this is. But this is the kind of abundance. Again, it's very well-rounded. It's foundation. It is. I'm not saying like you're going to be a billionaire. It's like, why do you even need that? You know, it's like when you're well-rounded, you have the love of a good man or a good woman. You are very secure. You know that this person trusts you and that you can trust them. This is abundance that a lot of people don't have. That's the security that a lot of people, you can't buy that. You know what I'm saying? Um, you're going to build some kind of foundational energy here between the two of you. That's what you want. When you say that you want a billion dollars or anything, that's what you want. You want security. And you're going to learn what that actually is. I'm here with this other person. And these other people are realizing what they've done on both sides of the aisle, both literally on both. This could be a family thing for both of you, like where the families of both of you are having to confront their own, like that family curse energy, the family karmas that have been worked out. But this is a very powerful partnership that's coming in and it's just going to feel so calm. And I think that's what you've been wanting for a long time. Somebody who at the very least doesn't disrupt your peace and like your serenity, they can be in your space with you and it's not disruptive and, um, yeah, and it's it's really just gonna feel like like that, and I I think that um, there's no yeah, you it might even start off like I'm hearing no strings, but to me it's like no karmic strings. Like this is like a fresh slate kind of energy. So that's what's coming in for you is you've put this to bed and it, it's triggering. You're letting go of whatever the journey was for you, and it's triggering the journey to start on these other people's side. However many you know people whatever. Um, they're going to realize that they love you. They're going to want to fuel that to come get you, but that you know that the journey is really about themselves. And so don't get caught up in the flattery or the fantasy. You're beyond that, I think, for a lot of you now. Just keep steady, keep firm in closing down this cycle and building with this new beautiful person that you have waited for. And they've waited for you and you guys are you guys are coming together. It's going to be beautiful. And um, there's a lot of healing and there's a lot of faith that's coming through here as well. And I think these other people are going to have to dig deep in their own faith as well. So that's what I have for you. If that resonates, please um, like, comment, and subscribe to my channel. Bye, guys. <laughs>